Hello, and thank you for clicking on this video. This is going to be a pick a card tarot reading, focusing on what is blocking you from your free will. So this is an idea that I had because it was something that I was just sort of noticing collectively when we're, I mean, currently filming this, if you're watching in the future, this is uh, uh, April now, 2020, so we're in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic. A lot of things are happening. A lot of people are freaking out. There's politics, there's health issues, there's job issues, there's all kinds of things going on right now. Um, so I feel like there's a lot of powerlessness that people are experiencing, a perception of powerlessness, and kind of this deterministic mindset of feeling like we don't actually have choice right now because a lot of our choices are being taken away. So I want to focus this on how can we um, radically embrace free will and what does that look like? Because I personally believe that free will is an absolute. It is um, absolutely given to you. You just have to be willing to step into alignment with it, which might be difficult. And there's reasons why we hold back from that. And so that's what this reading is going to be focusing on. So it's pick a card reading. I have um, three cards laid out here. I'm going to show you um, a close up in a second. So just pick with your intuition, whatever card you vibe with most. You can pick on the card itself, on the crystal, on the number. This is one, two, three. Whatever calls out to you. There's no right or wrong way to choose. Um, don't think too hard about it. Just the first one that you feel drawn to is the one for you. So hope this helps you and uh, let me know if you would like to watch more videos like this. Um, this is my first time kind of trying this out on YouTube so I hope it works out um, but yeah let me know what you think um, and we'll get into the reading. Okay I just wanted to give you guys um, a chance to look at the cards and kind of meditate on them so here are the cards. Um, again this is group one, group two, and group three so whatever you are drawn to uh, you can pause the video if you want to spend more time uh, meditating on it, um, but otherwise we will get into the reading with group one. Okay, so welcome group one. Um, I hope you don't mind the setup, it's kind of not the best. I know the light is like really blinding back here, but just <laughs> try to ignore it, okay? Um, it's the best I could do with what I had. So um, group one, you chose, um, this is opal. Stone. So this correlates to the crown chakra. So that's your chakra for spirituality, yeah. intuition, seeing the bigger, well, that's the kind of third eye as well, but um, see, oh my gosh. Um, seeing your connection to the divine and to everyone around you. So. Group one, let's see what uh, messages are coming up for you. So I'm going to flip the cards like this. Okay. So I'm gonna, um, I'll hold each card up to you so you can see it better. But, okay. So we have the Ace of Rods reversed. So that's what it looks like right side up. I'm using multiple decks, by the way, and this is all the decks I own, which is six, so not a whole lot, but hopefully enough. And we have the three of wands reversed. So again, here is the right side up. Okay, sorry that cut out, but here is third card, your third card, which is the page of coins reversed. And you have the five of masks. So this is in the traditional deck, this would be cups. Um, but it's masks in this deck. And we have a uh, play. So this is the teal swan frequency cards. So they're kind of like oracle cards. And then we have the buffalo from the uh, wild unknown animal spirit deck. So um, for both of these, I'll probably be reading the descriptions that they have in 
the booklets that the cards come with since they are oracle cards but I'll also give my interpretation so let's take a look I'm just gonna look at what stands out to me so what is blocking you on your free will okay it's really interesting that play came up actually because this card has been coming up a lot for me like every time I've used these cards recently this card has come up so I have a feeling that for you there's a sense that the things that you want to do like the things that bring you joy it feels like you're not allowed to do them for some reason like it feels like you know the things that you would do for no other reason like why do kids play games you know like they don't have any ulterior motive they're not doing it so you get something else out of it they're doing it just because it's it's fun and it brings them joy I feel like there's been a disconnection from that and it's like it's like what's the point of having free will if I'm not even you know gonna choose to do things that feel good to me it's like you've lost connection to what like your joy even is and like what your idea of like fun is you know like when was the last time that you just like had fun you know I feel like I don't know I just this card has been coming up a lot and I feel like it's speaking of like a need to reconnect to that like childlike sense of of fun and just like doing things for the fun of it because like there's honestly no other reason to do anything but then because it brings you joy because if you're not doing something for that reason then you're just kind of lining yourself up for a lot of suffering in your life so that's the first thing that stood out to me i really want to read what this buffalo card has to say because i don't think i've gotten this card before so i will let me just pause for one second so i can get that but i'll read that for you okay so i found the buffalo page so it says grounded yet heavenly practical yet spiritual the hooves of the mighty buffalo are grounded in the earth yet it is hard yet it is yet its heart and mind rise toward heaven the buffalo sees challenge hardship or a bump in the road as an opportunity for upliftment therefore the buffalo does not fear death illness or misfortune its gentle eyes look to the road ahead, trusting every turn. May we all experience this elusive, yet life-changing bliss from time to time, and may we allow this card to remind us that life is a precious gift. When in balance, trusting, pure presence. When out of balance, restless, lacks gratitude. And to bring into balance, prayer. So this is Buffalo. So I find the end. That should be a very interesting card to come up for right now. I mean, it says uh, Buffalo does not fear death, illness, or misfortune. It seems like a lot of us are fearing those things these days, right? So it's the Buffalo essentially kind of has this attitude of trust that everything happening and everything that will happen will ultimately be in the direction of what is ultimately wanted. So there's some level of trust that needs to be stepped into and I, I'm feeling a connection with these cards somehow, with the play card. You know, it's reminding me of like kind of like childlike sense of, of wonder about the world um you know like as children we don't really have that you know at least we're not born with it that sense of like distrust that you know we're not going to be able to grow up and achieve all the things that we want like for most of us you know and it you know depending on your childhood situation it may have been like knocked out of you earlier than later you know you might have grown up with with that belief that you that everything is gonna benefit you you might have not grown up with that belief but initially when you came into life you didn't have a belief that things were out to get you right that was something that you learned you didn't have a belief that you had to somehow like fight to have the world go your way or to achieve your desires like it was a given that's why you you know that's why you have a desire to play because it's you know it's what you want to do it's what brings you joy it's not something that you have to work towards right you don't have as a child you're not like 
trying to achieve things so that you can finally get to this stage of, of play and fun like you have an intrinsic desire to have this and it, again it might have been like knocked out of you um, sooner than later depending on what kind of childhood you had um, and my sympathy and empathy goes out to those of you who didn't really get to have much play in your childhoods because I know that that's something that can be very difficult then as an adult to even know what that looks like like what does joy even look like I don't even know I haven't ever had that experience so now's the time to really like dig back into that childhood need for play um, and see if you can somehow use that experience of fun and that playful energy to elicit a sense of of trust because I feel like trust is something that is very difficult to have right now um, but I think if you are doing things that bring you genuine joy it's easier to trust that one way or another you'll be able to keep having that joy right it, joy if it's something that you are postponing like oh I'll have fun after all of this is over you're not gonna be able to trust that that's even gonna be a, an option for you that's that's even gonna be possible so like how can you enjoy what you're doing right now rather than like trying to you know avoid all of this stuff first um, I think is kind of the message is coming up with just with those two cards so let me look at the rest of your cards okay so we have the three of wands reversed so it feels like you're stalling making some decision maybe multiple decisions this could also be like just kind of like you're taking or rather you have the chance now to take the time to kind of step back and like assess things like it's kind of a time for reassessment like assessing your options is what I'm seeing with this card it's like but I feel like you're you might be resisting that you know like you feel like you've been so used to living this path of determinism of this is how things are supposed to go I you know maybe it's you go to school and then you get a job and then you work nine to five every day or whatever different kind of expectations you have for your life in general like there's been a certain way that you've been programmed to believe that your life is supposed to go and you never really allowed yourself that chance to like actually take a step back take a step back and look at all of the options that you have and I feel like now would be the perfect time for you to really do that because like look at how expansive this area is that he's looking at like there is really no limit to things that you could do but it's like you've been stuck to this one path for so long that you have forgotten that you have these other options that this is not the only way that you have to go so I think it's essential for you to take some time to really take a step back and reflect on everything that you thought you had to do in this life like what are the things like if I were you I would like actually write down and like make a list like what are the things that I believe I have to accomplish in my life and then take a look at it and ask yourself do I actually have to accomplish these things is this stuff that I actually want to do for the joy of it or is it something that I feel like I have to do because I don't have trust that if I don't do that things will end up where they're where I want them to be um okay page of coins in reverse so there's issues with money as well that's coming up issues with finances and security um so the page is kind of like the childlike energy of the um, minor arcana. So again, I feel like there are some childhood beliefs that you're kind of holding on to about money and success um, that you might need to revisit like what that actually looks like for you. because I think you need to kind of again he's like assessing right you need to reassess what holds value for you so yeah to me this is speaking about sorry this is speaking about value so like if money like let's be honest money intrinsically has no value it's something that we just decided had value if money were to like go away tomorrow it doesn't exist 
what what has value to you how do you determine the value of something so i think you need to change your focus from money as this thing that is essential in order to live to money as things that i value okay money is how i acquire things that i value right i acquire money by values of my own by contributing some way of my own right i show i give my gifts my talents to others and i receive gifts and abundance in return that's what money was supposed to be it didn't end up being that way for a lot of us it ended up being this very deterministic idea of something that basically controls your life that if you don't make enough you'll never survive and you know this whole lack mentality but try to look at it as nothing more than something that you use to give value to things so what what is valuable to you what do you want to have value in this new life that you're creating what gifts do you have that like what value do you are you able to give to other people value is dependent on what people need right it's it's not something that is a stable fixture you might like uh for example a car mechanic might have very little value in like a five-star restaurant if he doesn't know how to cook but he knows how to fix a car right so but then you know a professional cook who doesn't know how to fix a car has no value uh, in a car mechanic shop trying to you know fix a car sorry that was a weird example but like i hope you understand what i'm saying like value is dependent on situations so like for you what value do you have that you are able to give um and in what situation does that act out what are the circumstances that will allow you to be able to come into your potential um and how can you reframe your idea of abundance to be about that coming into that state of fulfill, fulfilling your potential so that the money is it's not just money it's not just a necessity it is a representation of the things that you value in your life and the abilities that you have that you are able to give to other people okay um okay, five of masks okay so you're gonna have to like go through kind of a grief process here or you are rather going through a grief process here um there might be a lot of disappointments coming up for you there's a lot of things that suddenly you know due to the situation with this pandemic have gotten canceled there may have been things that you were looking forward to you know ideas for your future that got canceled maybe it was your prom your wedding your graduation you know a trip whatever it may have been there's a certain aspects of the old life that you have to mourn right now um and i think you should allow yourself to go through that process like don't allow anyone to tell you that you shouldn't be disappointed or that you shouldn't be having these feelings because i think it's it's essential for you to process them but you need to do that so that you can then you know move on from that state of of the past because what's keeping you from that free will is you're stuck right you're stuck thinking about what could have been so instead of looking about looking at the opportunities you still have waiting for you you're stuck mourning all of the, the people that you could have been right all the things you could have done and that's totally normal and totally understandable and i think you should allow yourself to move through those feelings but realize that ultimately you're not going to find any answers by you know wishing that the past would put itself back together because it's already broken it's already gone you can only move on right you can't spend all your time just wishing that things would go back to normal because they're 
there's not going to be uh, the same normal that there was before. It's going to have to be a new normal. So, you know, whatever emotion that brings up for you, you know, go through it. Go through that grief process. It's essential right now um, in order for you to step into this new, these new opportunities, these new, this new normal that you want to create, right? So I don't want you to think that the new normal is something that you're going to have to like just adjust to and it's going to just be what it is. That's that deterministic mindset again. It's something that you get to create, right? And that's what I see here with the Ace of Wands, Ace of Rods, but it's uh, Wands and other decks. But the Ace of Wands is about creation, right? This is like you know, to me, this card really symbolizes that act of free will. It's taking action, right? Taking action in alignment with your desires. Um, the wands are the cards of intuition, spirituality, passion. So it's following that desire, following that passion with, you know, consciously with your free will. So this is what is needed for you, right? We're still in the reverse, so we're still resisting that. But that is what is needed, this creation, this conscious creation of the future that you want. And that's going to be dependent on what you actually desire, what gives you joy for no other reason than that it gives you joy, right? Not it gives you joy because it gives you something else. Like, it should be something that gives you joy just because it does. And there's no explanation you can think of for that. That's the thing that you should be harnessing. That's your power here, right? Your power is your joy. There is no difference in the two so the things that give you joy intrinsically is the power that you are going to harness to be able to create the new future that you want that will allow you to have this resilience and this trust that no matter what happens you will be on the path towards the things that you want right so like overall I feel like there's just kind of a resistance to really taking that you know, that step back to reassess, reassess these things, reassess your relationship to money. What does money actually mean to you, right? Is it actually representative of things that you value or is it something that you see as, as a lack, as a necessity that you don't have, right? So take that time to like reassess, move through those feelings. Um, and like literally just today, like today my challenge to you is think of something that you want to do for no other reason than you want to do it. So it could be like doing a craft, painting a picture, calling a friend, going on a bike ride, baking uh, some cookies, whatever it is that is just like sounds fun to you. And like there's no, there's nothing you would get out of it other than that fun, right? It's not gonna get you um, approval. It's not gonna get you money. It's not gonna, you know, get you something else. It's just fun for you. And I want you to do that today. Okay, that's my challenge to you today and tomorrow and every day that you're here in quarantine and the rest of your life if you want to commit to that because I think that is how you're going to be able to come into that power to figure out what it, what life you actually want to create instead of just mourning the life that you don't have anymore because that's already gone. We've already crossed the threshold into the new the new way of life, right? So we have to look forward. We can't just stay in this state of fear because we don't know what's gonna happen. So move through those feelings and see if there's a way that you can find joy just in, in little things in life, like whatever it is. It doesn't have to be this big, like, life-changing thing automatically. If you can find ways to find joy, a little bit of joy in every day, like, your life will change rapidly, but you just have to, like, be willing to take that first step. So, I hope this was helpful for you. Um, let me know if it resonated, um, and I hope to see you again on here sometime soon. So, um, have a good day. Um, I'll see you. Okay, hello, group two. So you chose group two, you chose this fluoride, fluorite, fluorite, fluoride, one of the two <laughs> crystals. Um, so this is really good for throat chakra. 
so for speaking your truth, for coming into a sense of clarity, really good for that. So let's see what your cards have to say. Oh my goodness, I'm already, I'm already seeing things. All right. Okay. So I'm gonna, I'll show you all the cards um, first and then we can talk about them. Okay, so the first card uh, from uh, the Teal Swan Frequency deck is Conjunction. So I'll go through and read the description of what that means because it might not be initially very clear. It's a oracle card, sort of. Um, we have the Four of Wands reversed. Uh, we have the Fool. Have the ten. That's a ten. Ten of swords. We have the wheel of fortune. It's an interesting depiction of it in this deck. We have the deer from the wild unknown uh, animal spirits deck. So let me see. Okay, I really want to read this description to you because this card. The reason why I said I was already seeing things is because this card actually came up for a reading that I did yesterday, so it's uh, it's coming up a lot. So I'm gonna um, read the description to you so you can understand it because I think it, the description uh, does a really good job. So I'll uh, grab that real fast. Okay, so the description for conjunction says whether you have drawn this card upright or in reverse. The meaning is the same. A dramatic improvement in multiple areas of your life is in store for you. We often get frustrated because we feel as if we can only improve one aspect of our lives at a time. We also get frustrated because it feels like in order for one aspect of our life to get better, another aspect must get worse. This card puts those notions to shame. It suggests that sometimes fortune really can turn our way and the universe can help us multitask. Luck does not really exist in a universe that is based on the law of attraction because you are not powerless to the universe. The universe does not decide if you deserve good luck or bad luck. But that being said, if luck did exist, drawing this card would be the ultimate sign of good luck. So, very positive message there. So, conjunction, so I like to think of it as like improvements in multiple areas of your life kind of occurring in conjunction with each other. So, that's how I interpret that. So, let's see. Let me tune into this energy a bit more. Okay, the fool is kind of standing out to me. So, the fool card is one of those cards that I personally love. Um, it can have both its positive and more challenging, I guess, uh, implications. Positive being that you're kind of stepping into the unknown with this optimism. Um, this childlike sense of, of optimism and uh, naivety, almost. Really following that sense of joy and wonder, but the caution is that you might not really be looking at where you're going. See, he's kind of almost stepping off the edge here. So there is a cautionary uh, naivety that could be happening as well. So for me, with the question of free will. To me, this is kind of, it's like optimism that's almost like blinding optimism. Like, you know, with the sun and he's kind of like looking up to the sky. It's like he's not really looking at the reality of the situation, right? So it's like this kind of blind optimism that's almost a form of denial seems to be a blockage in your path. So you might have been coping with the situation with this coronavirus pandemic by kind of like committing yourself to 
seeing the positive side of things, which is great. We should always try to see the positive in things. But I feel like for you, it's more of a coping mechanism than something that is coming from an authentic, objective perspective. It feels more like something that you're doing in order to avoid looking at the reality of how you feel. So that's kind of what I'm picking up on with that card. So I feel like, yeah, there's like, it's great that you're looking up towards the future and you're just like, ah, yes, finally this chance to do all these things I've wanted to do. But it's like, you're, you're not really looking at the severity of the situation. You're not really looking at the, the danger that you're kind of facing. So I feel like you're kind of avoiding some aspect of yourself that really does feel kind of negative and afraid in this situation. And I think when it comes to free will, it seems like that's blocking you in some way because you're not, like your free will doesn't really exist if you, you're not in reality, right? If you're kind of in this dreamland, <laughs> this dreamlike state of pretending that everything's fine, you actually don't really have access to making choices with a sense of free will because you're not actually seeing all of the choices you're only seeing the illusion that you've placed over your choices so that's what i'm seeing with that card let's see if i can tie it back to the conjunction card i feel like you know this is a sign of of, of good luck so i, I do want to say that it seems like you will have some okay so my phone just cut me off because i was out of storage so that's fun but i was saying that it seems like you will have some breakthroughs um pretty soon in multiple areas of your life um i just feel like those breakthroughs are going to come once you kind of are more willing to take a more balanced approach uh, perspective rather where you can still keep your positive perspective but I want you to be able to see some of the more negative things that you might be feeling that you're not really allowing yourself to feel. Um, something about the description of this card that stood out to me was the um, like the idea that luck doesn't really exist because the universe isn't something that's like either out to get you or in your favor, right? It's something that you are actually creating. Um, the universe is uh, partially your your creation, and you get to create the you know the world that you live in. You get to create the life that you get to experience. So I feel like this is kind of like you know it's stepping into that that power of creation and realizing that luck is completely up to you it's completely up to you whether you have good luck or bad luck during this time it's completely up to your mindset and up to what you are willing to create so that's the message is kind of coming up for that card okay wheel of fortune this card is really interesting in the depiction that is in this particular deck. It's kind of reminding me <laughs> of like a hamster wheel. <laughs> I know that's kind of like a weird um, analogy, but like the way that uh, this guy just seems to kind of be running uh, in a circle. Like he's just running and running and running, thinking that he's going to get somewhere, but he's just stuck in the same circle. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of what it's making me think of. Oh, also, Wheel of Fortune, and then talking about luck, I feel like, I feel like there's a connection here. Um, it's like, yeah, it's like, again, something to do with that sense of denial, where you're like, running this rat race, essentially, you're running this hamster wheel, thinking that it, you know, you're almost to the good part, things are almost going to get better, right? You know, luck is almost going to, it's like, 
luck is right around the corner for you. Like, that's what it seems like. But you're not realizing that the power to manifest that good luck is actually in your hands. So it seems like you have this mindset. And I'm not trying to say this in, like, a way where it's, like, shaming you or uh, condemning you for this mindset. I don't think this is an inherently bad mindset to have or says anything negative about you but it seems like you have this mindset that you know you you have this perspective that this situation that's happening to you right now into the world is going to end up you know being uh, the the blessing that you have been asking for and that's a perspective that I see a lot of people adopting and I completely respect that and I think that there is some truth to that that through difficult times comes the tools that you need to create the life that you want to live and so i totally respect that and i think that's really valid but i think that you're kind of ignoring the part where you have to go through it <laughs> the part where you have to like actually feel those negative feelings um instead of just like you're trying to run straight towards the good part thinking it's right around the corner but you're not realizing that in order to get to it you have to go through it like you have to go through the more difficult parts of it so that means you have to kind of address your feelings um and acknowledge like how you actually feel about this situation. So I wanna read the um, card description for the deer um, card with the Wild Unknown deck because um, again, I just really I like these, this, the descriptions that are in the deck. So I'll read that to you, um, one second. Okay, so for the deer card, it says deer, uh, loving, intuitive, graceful, the mother. The deer represents the feminine aspects of earth energy. This energy is available to all creatures, regardless of gender, but it is especially potent in new parents. During the first few days, they are fully present, nurturing, and calm. Their inner beauty radiates, and a sense of grace calms the room. A deer personality affects others in this way, drawing them toward a quiet tenderness. The deer card may appear when a birth or celebration of new life draws near, or when a situation calls for absolute gentleness and compassion. When in balance, receptive, compassionate, nurturing. When out of balance, concerned, protective, uh, to bring into balance nature and children. So, mm -hmm. okay, so I think that what this is saying is that you are in need of some gentle caretaking of yourself right now. You might think that you have kind of stepped into this role of just pushing through it, right? Just keep on turning those wheels, being productive, doing all these things, like, you know, this idea that you just gotta keep working because, you know, it's just right around the corner everything's gonna turn out in a second if we just keep pushing forward i think there's a negative emotional state that you need to be very gentle and compassionate with right now so if i feel like it is probably some kind of fear um we have the ten of swords so there's a sense of like again fear and like despair <laughs> uh, is typically what the Ten of Swords talks about, um, like a sense of defeatedness, I should say, that I feel like instead of, you know, kind of ignoring and being in denial about, I feel like you should, or you're being called to, I don't want to say you should or you should not, this is all up to you, right? And that's owning your free will is realizing that you have the capacity to completely ignore everything I say and you know go on with life completely as you were doing it and like all the power to you but if you're open to it I think that the message here is that you're being called to be more um 
gentle and nurturing with yourself and with your emotions. So I feel you're being called to learn how to caretake your emotions and like address the, the hurt aspects within you like they are children because they are essentially children. We all have multiple different children selves inside of us, right? Um, you know, if, as you grow up uh, and you go through your childhood experience, there's many experiences that didn't really provide you with a sense of resolve and they never get resolved as you grow up unless you go and you revisit them and you revisit that child within you. So I feel like you're being called to do some inner child work here. Again, with the fool is usually a childlike energy that um, can uh, be uh, signifying of some inner child uh, work that needs to be done. And then we have the four of wands. Okay, so again, I feel like this is reversed also. So I feel like there's this picture of the future that you've been painting in your mind. Um, perhaps like before all this happened, you had an idea of how the future was supposed to be. And then all of this happened and it kind of seems like, you know, that kind of got turned upside down. So it's like, no, the future is very uncertain, but you're still trying to paint this super sunny, rosy picture of the future without realizing that it's actually kind of impossible to have the exact future that you were planning on now because everything is different. And that's not to say that you won't get to achieve the things that you desire, but it's understanding that this perfect ideal picture that you've been painting might not actually quite look like that in the current circumstance. It might need some adaptation. Um, also, this there's a sense of isolation, right? There's like this huge sand castle, but there's like no one in the picture. So I feel like you might have an idea of the kind of life that you want to build, the kind of future that you want, but it feels like no one is going to like be there for you. No one's going to be there to support you during that process. So it's kind of like, well, I could have everything I want, but if I don't have people, if I'm isolated, then like, what's the point? And I feel like that's very relevant right now when we're in these times where we are very isolated and we're being encouraged to isolate from, you know, government and all of these forces that seem so much bigger than us. It seems like we don't actually have any power to create the connection that we're actually desperately needing. And so I feel like we're, a lot of us are trying to paint this happy picture of a life that we can live that's still you know, feels purposeful without that connection, which actually isn't possible because we do need connection. And so I feel like there's a, something that you need to kind of look at that is not a particularly pleasant uh, truth um, about the future, about the future that you currently see yourself having. So you might consciously say, oh, my, you know, I think my future is going to be great. But, you know, subconsciously, there might be this fear that even if everything goes perfectly, you're still going to end up alone somehow. And so I feel like that's something that you need to look at and see and then assess, is that actually true? You know, is that actually how it has to be? Because, again, this conjunction card is making me think that there's a sense of needing to come into the realization that you have a hand in creating the luck that you acquire in your life. You have a hand in creating the world around you. And that's not to create it in a way to where you're just like in denial about it and you're just like painting every you're painting your prison walls yellow so to speak but it's to realize that you have the capacity to see things from an actual more objective standpoint where you can then step into that space of free will of like you know you're looking at the risks you're looking at the fears you're caretaking them you're 
addressing those hurt aspects within you. You're addressing that feeling of powerlessness and defeat and you're, you know, coming at that with a, a loving energy. You're realizing this kind of hellish wheel that you've been stuck on and you're, for the first time, maybe, you know, realizing what if I just stopped running so hard and trying to, you know, on the same path? What if I stepped off for a second? What if I reevaluated everything I thought I knew about my future and thought about something that I would actually rather create, you know? What does a, uh, your future look like? Like, what do you want it to look like? And how does connection with other people play into that? And how do you see that happening um, in the world now when things seem so uncertain and it seems like connection is kind of something that's being taken away from us in a lot of in a lot of cases um yeah i feel like there's like an opening or a widening of a perspective that is going to happen kind of <laughs> whether you consciously choose it or not it feels like it's like just kind of coming towards you but i feel like it's something that you can really fully step into and that's your first act of free will is stepping into the decision to really see really see things really see reality for what it is really acknowledge how you feel the good and the bad can you look at both of them and hold both of them at the same time it's very difficult it's cognitive dissonance we have difficulty with that but it's something that you're actually capable of um there's a quote by a famous psychologist william james he said my first act of free will will be believing in free will and so i feel like that's something that um, just came to my mind and i feel like it's something that will resonate with you um, with this kind of conjunction card because it might seem like you know on the outside you might be projecting this idea of like oh i have free will i'm you know i'm doing what i want to do and i'm you know looking at the bright side of things but deep down you don't really feel like you have free will because you're still avoiding that negative aspect right if you're in a state of avoidance are you actually in a state of, of free will or are you just doing what you're doing in order to avoid that negative feeling so i feel like yeah i feel like you need to um take a second to just really be compassionate with yourself and address the hurt feelings that are inside of you and then realize your capacity to create from a space of, from a neutral space of, you know, you don't have to create from this, this space of being only positive or being from the space of only negative. You're creating from this objective space of, I see both, I see the positive, I see the negative, and now I'm gonna make the decision that feels right for me. So I hope that resonates with you um let me know if it does um uh i my heart goes out to you and um i hope that you are able to find some some new perspectives that help you during this time so um hope to see you again sometime soon and uh have a good day okay hello group three so you guys picked this little i'm honestly not sure what this is i think it might be like a sunstone excuse me there um might be like a sunstone uh I, i'm not sure i've had this for a long time since before i cared to know <laughs> what it was um but nevertheless it's orange color suggests that we have a correlation with the sacral chakra here so that could be things like pleasure, creativity, sexuality, um, emotional sensitivity, uh, kind of all correlate with the sacral chakra. So ooh, we're going to go ahead and see what your cards are here. Hmm. Okay. All right. Okay, so I will show you each of the cards and then... Um, We'll start reading into them. So we have judgment. We 
have the magician in reverse. So here it is, right side up. Have it reversed. We have Kindred Soul, which is also reversed. This is from the Teal Swan Frequency Tarot, uh, which is kind of like an oracle deck. So I'll read out that oracle description to you, as well as uh, one for this card, which is Dolphin. This is from the Wild Unknown Animal Spirits deck. So we'll look at that description as well. We have the Two of Wands. Oh, interesting. We have actually the Two of Wands in two different decks. Look at that. It came out came up twice. I just love when that happens. Oh my god. Okay. So. Um, let's see. Okay, I actually want to start by reading the description for Kindred Soul. Um, because I just feel called to do that first, so we'll do that and, uh, continue. Okay, so we have the description for Kindred Soul, and this is reversed. So it says, excuse me, if you have drawn this card in reverse, you are hoping that the answer to your happiness in the way, in the way you are going to fill the emptiness inside you is someone else. Because you are more focused on the lack within you, you are not currently a match to this person or these people right now. You are a match to people who exacerbate the emptiness and loneliness you feel. You need to learn how to be with your feelings instead of trying to escape from them or change them because by escaping from them or trying to change them, you make them wrong. You reject yourself. You are never going to be a match to a good feeling partner who approves of you if you keep rejecting yourself. You deserve your love and attention. You deserve your unconditional presence. So, I don't know about you, but that kind of called me out a little bit. <laughs> I love it when I get called out by my own readings. Um, so, <laughs> I feel like I resonate with this group already, group three. <laughs> Where are we at? Um, yeah, so... <laughs> Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm trying not to try not to laugh too much. Okay. Um, let me look at this card a little bit. Sometimes I just like to kind of vibe with the energy of the cards, if you know what I'm saying. Okay, yeah, it's like. Yeah, there's a, a union of kind of opposing energies here with the, like, the blue and the pink, and then they kind of combine in the middle. So, I feel like that union is something that needs to take place. Um within you before you're able to find that kind of union outside of you, right? So let me, okay, but we'll come back to that, but I want to look at the rest of your cards. Um, magician reversed. Okay. Yeah, so what I am seeing here, it's like this guy is, he looks like he's working on building this mask, right? It feels like you're working really hard on constructing the perfect mask that will gain you love and approval. And that kind of ties into the message from this card, right? That was basically like, right now you are only exacerbating the feelings of loneliness that you might be feeling because you are not being authentic in your relationships. 
you are not spending time with people who value you for your authenticity. You are spending time for peop with people who value you for this mask that you have created. And so you're going to work trying to construct the perfect mask and every time it doesn't work, every time you don't get that sense of connection that you're looking for, you think that it's a problem with your mask. And so you go and you try and you try to fix it. And you try to fix it and you try to fix it and you try to fix it. And you, you tear it apart and you rebuild it and you think this time I'm gonna get it right. This time I'm going to build a mask that finally gets me the approval that I want. That finally gets me the connection that I want. Right, it doesn't really occur to you that it's the mask that's preventing you from those, these things in the first place, not the quality of the mask not the way the mask is designed, it's the mask itself that you think is essential, that is actually your detriment. So, okay, let me try to refocus this back onto the question of, of uh, free will, right? You can't, be in a state of free will if you are being controlled by your need for connection in a way where you don't realize that you actually have the capacity to create it genuinely because you are being controlled by this idea that you have to be a certain way in order to achieve that connection. Okay, I kind of want to read this dolphin um, card, see what that says, and then, because I am interested in, in, in the two of wands coming up twice, but I'm not quite feeling it yet, so I want to see if the dolphin card can give us some, some clarity, so we'll go there um, and see what that says. Okay, so dolphin. Innately intelligent, healer, light, blessings. The gifts of the dolphin are beyond what our human minds can grasp. Dolphin personalities are often drawn to the healing arts as they are sensitive to the subtle and enjoy working on the level of the spirit. It's easy for dolphin types to underestimate the impact they make in the world. These creatures play such an important role in the wheel of karma that coming in contact with a dolphin type will change the entire course of your day and thus your life. This card can also indicate a profound blessing is on the way. When in balance, active healer, strong spiritual practice. When out of balance, underestimates own power. To bring into balance like-minded spirits. Oh my gosh, okay. I love this because like-minded spirits, kindred souls, so many synchronicities. Also, I love, I just, I love this card, the dolphin. Dolphins as a kid, my favorite animal was a dolphin, so honestly, I feel like this <laughs> this group is like kind of um, a little bit for me, um, but I hope it's for you too. Uh, hopefully, uh, we have some kindred souls with each other right here in group three. Um, I'm really feeling y'all. Uh, I, I really resonate with this, so I hope you do too. Um, but... Yeah, so underestimates own power was the the stuff that stood out to me. Um, and being a healer type. So I feel like there's a part of you that feels like you can't really fit in anywhere. Because you haven't really found that, that group of people that really gets you. Um, and so I feel like you haven't really realized your full capabilities, right? You've spent all this time trying to construct the perfect personality so that people will like you. When all of this time, power that you've been using to do that could actually be power that you're using to bring immense spiritual gifts to people. Like you have an immense capacity for healing 
and transformation, right? Like look at all this power here, but you're just focusing it on the wrong place. You're focusing it on trying to construct yourself in such a way that you will finally be worthy of connection instead of focusing it on bringing about light and change and healing into the world because it feels like you you don't really see that that's your gift yet you don't really see how that's your your ability that's the power that you have because it doesn't really seem like anything you've done up until this point has gotten you any sense of connection because it just seems like you've kind of been like swimming alone and you haven't really found those like-minded spirits that really get you. And then we have judgment, which it feels like you've, you're kind of like, like you've been praying, you know, whether or not you're religious, I don't necessarily mean that kind of prayer, but you've been like kind of just begging and begging and, and, you know, asking the universe, like, just please, like, please, when am I going to get what I want? When am I going to get this connection? What am I doing wrong? Like, it, it feels like a part of you has given your power up to some extent to this greater idea of the universe or God or source or whatever you believe in. It feels like you have a part of you has given up your power to create to this this idea of of the greater universe where you don't see yourself as a part of it you see it as something that has control over your fate and so you're begging and begging and begging like when is it going to be my turn when am i finally going to attract these like-minded spirits these kindred souls like I'm doing everything I know how. Why is it not working? And it's because you don't realize that you actually are the universe creating this situation for yourself, right? You're not separate from God or source or the universe. It's not a separate force from you. You're a part of it. And so the question is, what part of you is not giving those things to yourself? right what part of you is not giving yourself the validation and the approval and the love that you've been wanting because it feels like you you perceive that that you're just not gonna be able to achieve that from anyone else and so it's like well why would i bother why would i bother trying to love myself and accept myself if it's you know nothing i do is going to get me that approval but I think you really need to ask yourself, like, if there was nothing I could do, you know, if I really was as powerless as I feel to get that kind of connection and understanding, and all I had was myself, if all I had to connect with was myself, then why would you not love yourself if you were all that you had, if you were the only person who could give you that approval and that connection and that uh, sense of of understanding then why would you not give it to yourself and I think that's a question that you need to ask yourself and that's another thing that has come up uh, for me recently as well and it's a question that I've been asking and I think it's important because I don't believe that I don't believe in this idea that no one can love you until you love yourself but i think if you if you have that belief then it's indicative that there is a part of you that thinks that you are inherently unlovable and so therefore you have to you like you you're cursed you have to love yourself because no one else is going to and i think that's indicative that that there's a part of you that just really does need your own approval and uh, attention um, because 
that belief is coming from a place of, of hurt. It's not coming from a place of truth. Um, but it's a place of hurt that only, I don't want to say only you are able, because again, it's this idea of this mindset of, you know, only you're able to love yourself. That's not what I mean. But I want you to stop looking at loving yourself as a way to get connection with other people and instead look at loving yourself as a way to get love from yourself. Like, that's the only thing you're getting out of it. You're not getting, you're not loving yourself so that you can get something else out of it. You're loving yourself because why wouldn't you, right? If loving yourself, all it was going to give you is that now you love yourself. Like, it wasn't going to give you anything else. Why would you not do it? So... I hope that message resonates. I sorry, I kind of went off on a tangent there, but I want to talk about these two of wands cards that both came up. So I'm just trying to like look at the difference between these cards. It's interesting. And this card we have someone who's alone. And this card, we have someone who is, you don't see the other figure, but they're standing next to someone else who's holding the second wand. Okay. <laughs> I feel like, a, you know, a part of you is like searching all over. Like you feel like you've searched the world and back, trying to find this kindred spirit, this soulmate, this twin flame, whatever it is, this person who understands you, you've searched the whole wide world looking and looking and looking. Not really seeing this wand that's behind you, right? This card, it's like you've turned around now and you've realized that the key to finding that other person is to turn around and find that connection within yourself. It's like, kind of like a mirror is like what I'm seeing here with this like little orb. It's like, I've searched the whole world and now what's left, what's left is you look in the mirror. You look in the mirror and you connect with yourself because I feel like you haven't been able to actually connect with yourself because even when you try to connect with yourself, you're still putting on a mask. You're not actually even being vulnerable with yourself. You're still trying to make yourself approvable to yourself. Like it's not just that you're putting on a mask for other people to get approved up, to get approval from other people. You're putting on a mask for yourself to get approval from yourself. So I feel like even if you can't take the mask off with other people yet, at least take it off with yourself. At least be honest with yourself and say, hey, like this is actually who I truly am. Like without, you know, I'm gonna stop doing everything that I've been doing that I think is gonna get me approval. And I'm just going to, like, actually try to understand who I am without all of that. Right? And then I'm going to look in the mirror. And I'm going to look at myself. And I'm going to search for understanding. And search for compassion for this part of myself that I have been so disconnected from because I think there is no way that it will gain me the approval that I want because that is actually your biggest gift your biggest gift is the part of you that you are have been too afraid to show anyone that's your that's your biggest gift that's your capacity for healing that's you know that's your purpose here that's the answer you've been waiting for. But it's this part of you that you are convinced will never get you approval from anyone. But it's that part of you that you need to, well, you need to completely embrace in order to attract 
these kindred souls that you've been so desperate to find. So I feel like this kind of have, has been very rambly, um, but I hope that this kind of ties in for you of how this um, applies to free will, because you haven't even had free will with yourself. Like I was saying, you've been rejecting yourself. You've been saying, oh, you need to do this, you need to do this. Like you've been trying to discipline yourself or maybe, you know, you think that you need to have some sort of self punishment if you don't do something correctly and like you're very hard on yourself I feel like and because I mean look you're literally so hard on yourself that you break yourself apart and put yourself back together and think that this time I'm gonna do it right so this is what's actually taking away your free will because you're so caught up and molding yourself to be the person that can attract approval that you don't actually realize that you are your own barrier to gaining your approval to gaining that attention that love that connection that understanding that you've been looking for so stepping into free will is stepping in to radical self-acceptance that means being completely vulnerable with yourself, taking off the mask with yourself, saying, actually, I don't want to do this shit at all. Like, you know, if you're, if you've been working for, let's just say, you've been, you know, working, you know, day and night for your entire life, super hard for this career that you thought you were supposed to have. And now it's like suddenly you're realizing that you maybe don't want that, or maybe it looks different than you thought it would, or maybe... All of these rules that you've set for yourself suddenly feel restricting and it's like you don't feel like you have any freedom with yourself right so your first act of free will is to actually realize that you don't have to do or be any type of way or do anything okay in order to have acceptance of yourself within yourself. I think that's your first step towards free will. Um, because if you can do that, if you can fully accept yourself without having to do anything, without having to make yourself worthy, having to mold yourself into something that you feel like can be approved of, then you will start to see the ripple effect that that has. And you will start to see the people come into your life that actually have been are providing you with that sense of connection and belonging that you have been asking for for a very long time but it starts with with yourself and it starts with the willingness to connect with yourself not so that you can get connection from other people but because you have honestly have nothing else like you have nothing else at this point if you're not if every you know if you're not going to get connection from other people if it just seems like impossible to you okay don't fight that that belief you don't need to fight that belief right now what you need to do is say okay if that was true then i guess all i have is myself and i guess i better try to connect with myself and just see where that takes me and you'll be surprised because it will take you towards these people that you like you're so blinded to right now because you haven't actually allowed yourself to embrace your own authenticity so you you literally can't even see all of these people and all of these things that you've been wanting it will only come once you are willing to be vulnerable with yourself accept yourself just for the sake of accepting yourself and then you will start to gradually move through this process of understanding that this is actually your purpose here and that you actually, you know, the things you're most ashamed of are actually your greatest gifts here. So I hope that resonates. I feel like I've been rambling for a long time with group three, um, but I definitely feel for you group three I resonate with you I hope you resonate with with this as well um 
and I'd love to hear your thoughts um, in the comments if you feel like sharing. Um, and if not, I hope to see you back here again sometime soon. So thank you for watching um, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.